this kind of brutality goes way, way back to slavery times in the United States, but we didn't really see it in the general public until about 25 years ago or 30 years ago now, uh, when Rodney King was beaten in Los Angeles. And that, that started riots in 1991 that were horrific. But we've seen it since then, we've seen again and again and again, thanks to video and then video phones, the terrible things that happen to black people essentially just because they're black. They get shot, they're terrified because white cops or black cops come up and see them as potential killers or criminals. So you have people who are, a man who's selling cigarettes in New York killed by a chokehold. You have this man killed for what? For, for passing a fake $20 bill that he may not even have known was fake? No, no, this is not acceptable at all. Uh, I think there are two things here as well, one or three even. One is a question of policing, uh, which is where you have uh, police forces uh, that cl clearly have not uh, done the training and the education of their forces uh, to, to get the word out that these kind of crimes do not warrant uh, this kind of physical uh, and, and, and well, why lethal. not? We we had we had we had uh, a few years back uh, Ferguson, that suburb of St. Louis. Uh, of that's what we were. Everybody was saying at the time. Why hasn't the training happened since? Be, well, here's here's where you get into two other things. The the other is that it, there's a personnel issue in terms of uh, racism among police forces. Uh, and uh, and in, in this particular case, uh, I've seen reporting about the, the officer in question that, uh, that seems to suggest uh, that there are uh, certain aspects of racism involved. And then the third is societal, and that's that the United States has a racism problem. It has a, a, a police violence against black people problem. Uh, and it hasn't dealt with it. Christopher Dickey mentioned an essential point here, which was 1991, those riots in Los Angeles. Well, it's videotaped and it hadn't been beforehand. And uh, social media uh, with the filming uh, of uh, a lot of these incidences has changed a lot how much spotlight is thrown on this issue. Um, that has, uh, we saw now, worked both ways in the last 24 hours. The president of the United States had a tweet blocked by Twitter uh, uh, because it violated, quote, rules about glorifying violence. It wasn't blocked, actually. It was, it was filtered. You have to click bef twice before you can go to the tweet. The tweet which says that he told the governor of, uh, of Minnesota that the military is with him all the way. We will assume control. But when the looting starts, the shooting starts. Laurel Chor, your reaction? I think that tweet was outrageous. When I got the notification about it, I actually gasped. And I think for me to be shocked by something that President Donald Trump did means that it had to be really bad. I think the move by Twitter is certainly something surprising and new. Um, I think it's a good thing and, and it reminds us how much power these social media companies have and, and how they should probably be playing more you know, be accepting more responsibility for the role they have in global events. And yes, Poirier, your thoughts on this? Well, if only Twitter had done it earlier, you know, if from the first tweet uh, that showed that either glorified violence or, or uh, was inaccurate from the, the American president, Twitter had uh, done this, perhaps we would be in, you know, in a different situation today. Um, the... Um, how to say this? I mean that the that the American president should want to um, regulate social media. I mean, social medias create monsters, and monsters use social media. So um, they um, they are almost made for each other. Um, but to to go back on Minneapolis, because you know he, he calls thugs people who are just sincerely shocked, uh, like the, that everybody who saw uh, the video of this poor man being killed uh, by two police officers. Um, you know, we, I mean, Chris talked about uh, slavery uh, um, and we talked about the endemic racism in, in, uh, in the US, which is a, a long story, but we should also talk about Donald Trump, who is at the top 
of um, power and should set examples and and is only pouring um, oil on the fire and um, you know what we're seeing since he was elected president is the slow decay uh, decomposition really of the very fabric of society and public life in the US and uh, you know there's a corruption and that's that's what we're seeing